honor to organize the 222 FIFA World Cup is Qatar. <laughs> Some people were in the street celebrating, some people actually were at homes with their families. It was a moment where all the world were tuning, and for us, I think this is a very proud moment. said, we have this challenge. Do you have anybody who can uh, help uh, to uh, tackle this challenge? So I said, me, please. <laughs> It's exciting to be at a top-level event like the Football World Cup. You know, I work in a Disneyland of football that every day that I come to work, I'm excited to be here. On December 2nd, 2010, everything changed for this small country, a kind of Cinderella. After a very well-organized campaign, the Emirate of Qatar, with just 300,000 inhabitants, won the candidacy to organize the 2022 FIFA Football World Cup. Qatar! Qatar beated the United States, Japan, South Korea and Australia. In the streets of the capital, Doha, people could not believe their luck. Fatma al Nuaimi, the spokeswoman for the World Cup, is the face chosen by Qatar to represent the country in the most important event in its history. She does not hide her emotion. For us, it was a really proud moment. It's like it was a mix of emotions. I mean, the BIT team who have actually worked on, it was a, like a group of young Qataris who have um, bigger dreams. And I think this was a hope for the whole region. On November 21st, just a year before the first match, the Prince of Qatar unveiled the sand clock with a countdown in order to kick off the World Cup year. Football. Soccer goes beyond politics. Soccer has no borders. Soccer is for everyone. And now all I'm asking is for people to come and enjoy the best World Cup ever organized. And I think it will be unmatched because I see and believe that very few countries could reach this level. Eight stadiums of the 2022 World Cup are already fully prepared and very close to one another. Each stadium costed an average of $750 million. Take us in the time machine to the first day of the World Cup. What will happen that day? Eight stadiums across 70 to 80 miles, seven air condi conditioned stadiums, state of the art. You know, I think firstly, the fan experience is going to be incredible because they're going to come in and see state-of-the-art facilities. Construction was very fast and according to human rights organizations, some workers, in most cases from third world countries, died or were injured during construction, sometimes in temperatures of 50 degrees heat. Demonstrations broke out in some European countries, accusing the Qatar government of sports washing. But in Doha, they responded that in recent years, working conditions have improved and that the countdown has already started. So every stadium, we, uh, we've done a lot of work on that stadium. Dr. Sure that Saud Ghani is a professor of engineering at the University of Qatar. When Doha won the bid, the World Cup was scheduled for the summer of 2022. During those months, temperatures can reach 50 degrees Celsius and 85% humidity. When they presented the problem to Dr. Saud, his answer was immediate. So, so the, the challenge was how you can cool a big stadium with a big oculus open to sky for the grass, for the players and for spectators. Shortly thereafter, FIFA and the government decided to postpone the World Cup to November and December 2022, dates in which the temperature does not exceed 28-29 degrees Celsius. Even so, the engineer and his team went to work. How to transform the eight future stadiums of the World Cup into climate-controlled stadiums for the public and players with temperatures of 21 to 23 degrees. 
Using sustainable methodologies, Dr. Saoud developed an air recycling system from a tube placed under the seat of each member of the public. So we propel cold air gently. So with time you will feel yourself that you are in a bubble. We only cool about two meters above where you sit. All the nice features we have now in the city, um, Qatar 2022 was the springboard, the propeller for this. Tens of thousands of Israelis dream of visiting Qatar with the World Cup, despite the fact that it is a country with which Israel does not have formal diplomatic relations. For many in Israel, that is one of the big questions. Are Israelis going to be allowed? Every fan, everyone is welcome. And this tournament is for everyone, so everyone can actually come and enjoy the spirit and the festivities that this tournament would bring. Enrique Zimmerman, I-24 News, Doha, Qatar.